can go. Sorry. So, should I start again? So, so the title is Connection is Symmetric Differential Forms. The connections are going to be understood as, uh, as we do usually in symmetric differential form, uh, like in algebraic geometry. So we first start over the field of complex numbers because this is where the motivation is coming from. So X is a smooth uh, projective variety, a uh, smooth quasi-projective variety, I apologize. And uh, over the field of complex numbers, and because we are over the field of complex numbers, we have the notion of the topological fundamental group. And uh, this is based in one point, so we fix a point, which sometimes will play a role and sometimes won't. So for example, in the next slide here, it doesn't. So we recall the theory of Simpson. He defined, uh, well, in fact, it's not quasi-projective, it's projective here. And um, he defined uh, the Betty moduli space, and in fact, it's not him who defines the Betty moduli space, but this is uh, Lubotsky magic. So this is a quasi-projective variety, and if I don't put any uh, extra condition, in fact, it's even an affine variety. And uh, here for the discussion, it's going to be important to have it as an affine variety. It's even defined over Z over the integers. And the complex points of this uh, Betty moduli space uh, are precisely the ISO classes of uh, semi-simple local systems of rank R, complex local systems of rank R. So that's one space here. And then Simpson proved that this is topologically equivalent. In fact, this is more precise, but for the discussion here, I need only this, to the moduli space of Durham objects and what are of rank R and what are they? They are some uh, the complex points. So this uh, moduli space here is defined over the field of definition of X. So this is a field of finite type inside of C. And the complex points here are precisely uh, so, um, semi-simple or polystable um, rank R connections, algebraic flat connections on vector bundles. In fact, connections in characteristic P, uh, in characteristic zero on uh, coherent shifts, they are, uh, the coherent, underlying coherent shifts is necessarily locally free. So here there is no restrictions to say that this is on vector bundles. And again, this is topologically equivalent to yet another coarse moduli space, which is called the Dolbo moduli space. And now the complex points of that are polar stable of degree zero uh, Higgs vector bundles. So that means vector bundles which are endowed with a linear map or linear map from the vector bundle to the vector bundle twisted by the shift of uh, one force. So as, as already discussed, the Betty modular space is affine. And uh, on the other hand, the Dolbo modular space, because the point of the Dolbo modular space is a pair of consisting of a vector bundle together with a, um, a linear uh, endomorphies from the vector bundle to itself ten, ten, uh, tensorize, tensorize with, um, with the one forms. We can take the characteristic polynomial of this uh, uh, so-called Higgs field, which is this linear map, and it has values in an affine space, the points of which are uh, precisely symmetric differential forms from one to the, to the rank. Is that clear? So we have a, we have a field, a linear map of in, uh, with values in, uh, in the vector bundle tensorize of one forms. When we take uh, um, the characteristic polynomial of this uh, uh, linear map, then we obtain um, the coefficients of the characteristic polynomials are precisely symmetric differential forms. 
Now we look at this condition vanishing, which says that all those differential forms here die. So that means the base of the Hitching map is just a point, this is zero. And if that is the case, because the Hitching map is proper, the Dolbo moduli are proper. I mean, are compact as a topological vector space, as a topological space, I apologize, not very focused. And at the same time, because of Simpson uh, fundamental uh, isomorphism here, it is affine. And uh, as a consequence, as observed by Yarapura a long time ago, then uh, those spaces here, those uh, algebraic varieties here, which are uh, quasi projective uh, as a general shape, they have to be zero dimensional because this space here is affine and this space is projective. So the only way it can happen is when it is zero dimensional. So uh, let me denote by van here the vanishing condition and the vanishing condition by this simple observation, but based on the deep theorem of Simpson implies that those modular spaces are zero dimensional. So I denote this condition by fine for finite, uh, finite. So we have only finitely many uh, points here. So in particular, this fine condition here, this finiteness condition implies that all complex local systems are rigid. That means they are isolated in the moduli. Is that clear here? Jerome, you look uh, puzzled. Is that, is that clear? Can I go to the next page? Here? Sure, sure, no, that's fine. Yeah. So uh, it's a pre uh, observation here. And uh, now, what is not a pre. So again, uh, when you have this vanishing condition here, you have necessarily this finiteness condition, uh, thanks to Simpson. But what does not uh, uh, follow directly from Simpson is a theorem of uh, Bruno Barb, Klingler, and Totaro uh, from uh, uh, 2013, which is an answer to a question I myself posed, is that under these strong vanishing conditions that there are no symmetric differential forms, then in fact, all complex local systems are finite. I mean, not only they are rigid, because the role moduli are uh, zero dimensional, so we cannot deform them. But in fact, the monodromy is finite. So what was their proof at the time? Uh, it goes like this, it relies on positivity uh, theory coming from hot theory in complex geometry. And uh, the um, proof goes as follows. First by Simpson, uh, uh, so you remember that we observe that the moduli spaces which receive those points here are zero dimensional. So in particular, the local system are rigid. There is no way we can deform them. So uh, by Simpson theory, uh, those local systems are complex variation for structures. And in fact, Simpson theory goes as follows. It sees the other topological isomorphism with the Dolbo side here, again. So now on the Dolbo side, there's an algebraic C-star operation, which is uh, computed by rescaling the Higgs field by the C-star operation, replacing a Higgs field theta by T times theta for T in C-star. So this is an algebraic operation. And then, because the points are isolated, then, uh, then uh, all the local systems are um, invariant under the sister operation. And then Simpson proves that uh, there are a complex variation for structures. On the other hand, the theorem of Katsarkov's Tsuo, which uh, goes uh, uh, roughly as follows, they say that uh, so you have a represent, now you go to the Betty side, you have a representation of the fundamental group. And um, because it's rigid, then this representation of the fundamental group up to conjugacy has values in GLR of a number field, otherwise you could move it. And now the question is whether you are in GLR of a number field or in GLR of a number ring. So, uh, 
their theory says that uh, if you are in GLR, if you are not in GLR of a number ring up to conjugacy, that means if the monodromy group, the image of the monodromy, uh, is not compact, that means it doesn't land in GLR of a number uh, ring at some prime p, then, uh, then they prove that, uh, so if the image is not compact, uh, compact when you go to QP rather than staying in, uh, in Q, or in Q bar P rather than staying in Q bar, then they produce a symmetric differential form by uh, um, studying the so-called Schaffarich map, which has a property that it contracts all the subvarieties over which the given uh, a given local system has finite monodromy. And because there are no symmetric differential forms, uh, by the strong assumption we had here, then necessarily uh, the local systems are integral. And, uh, and then once you know this, then the theorem of Kang's rule says that omega one is big, in particular, uh, symmetric uh, one forms exist for uh, the degree of the symmetric forms being very large. So that's the way they prove, uh, they give a positive answer to the question I have posed here. So we can, uh, we can uh, draw two, co two consequences here. By, uh, so we have uh, this vanishing condition, which is very strong, which implies this uh, finiteness condition. And the vanishing condition implies the theorem that the monodromy is finite. And, uh, but this is sharp in the following sense that the finiteness condition does not imply the vanishing condition. And this is a theory of Margulis super rigidity. There are vari Shimura varieties of rank at least two. And, uh, so Shimura varieties have the property that uh, all the moduli spaces of local system of a given rank are finite because all, rigid, all local systems are rigid. So that implies uh, that uh, all, uh, because all those moduli spaces are quasi-projective and each point is isolated, all of them are zero dimensional. So we have this finiteness condition. But, uh, but uh, because we are on the Shimura varieties, they, they carry a lot, of local, a lot of local systems with infinite monodromy. So a variation of hot structures which are not finite. And uh, consequently, in order to obtain the theorem, we really need this strong condition here. Okay, so this is uh, the background here. On the other hand, we prove with uh, Michel Groschenik um, uh, to some years, uh, a few years ago, that uh, given uh, the finiteness condition here, then uh, all uh, complex local systems are integral. And in addition, if we take a connection, so this is on the Betty side, and now on the Durham side, if we take a, if we take a, our variety, we take a model of our variety of a ring of finite type over z and now we take a w point a w being uh, some uh, some v vectors of a finite field here we take a w point and we look uh, of the field of definition of the variety we look at uh, the value of our connection on uh, the fiber uh, over this periodic field so then uh, then it is first an isocrystal which is to say that the model of our connection here over W, when we look at it mod P and we look at the um, P, P curvature, then the P curvature is nilpotent. This is equivalent to saying uh, that this is uh, um, an isocrystal. That means when we go to the completion of the variety over W, uh, then we have an isocrystal. So this is one thing. And the second thing is that this isocrystal is endowed with a Frobenius structure. So it's a very strong indication to say 
is that uh, those uh, local systems in characteristic zero, in fact, they should be motivic, but uh, we cannot prove motivic, but we can prove this property. So uh, that means this integrality condition here, uh, which was a key point here in the proof uh, um, and uh, was uh, proven using this strong condition, vanishing condition. In fact, one can prove it under the weaker condition, this finiteness condition here. So I, I repeat here, so the finiteness condition, and we can even give a finite, uh, we can even give a rank here. Uh, this implies in this given rank, that the local system is a um, Z bar factor of a Z variation for structure. So the proof was purely, the proof we gave was purely algebraic and relied on the existence of companions, which ultimately come from the Langlands program and in higher dimension were proven here by Drinfeld. So the theorem of uh, Bruno Barb, Klingler, and Tataro is then equivalent to saying that the monodromy is unitary. And uh, that is uh, using Simpson's correspondence, uh, equivalent to saying that the Higgs field is zero. And this in turn is a condition which can be seen on the mod P reduction of the Higgs bundles. So that's the introduction here to uh, what I want to explain. So what are the problems we address? So um, again, this vanishing condition, vanishing of the symmetric differential forms is a purely algebraic condition. Having finite monodromy is a purely algebraic condition. So can, what can we say purely algebraically? If you remember the proof of the finiteness of the monodromy relies really heavily on uh, highly analytic tools, which are by no means algebraic. So uh, we can pose uh, as a problem to find an analog of the CRM for isocrystals and for mod P connections. So that's a program here. So let me give a term model uh, where we need no tools at all. But uh, for example, if you want to retrieve, uh, the, I mean, uh, in, in rank one, what is the CRM saying? And in fact, in rank one, you don't, you don't even need this very strong condition, vanishing condition, but the finiteness condition, I mean, zero dimensionality of the modular species is enough. So uh, and I, here, uh, in that case, you just say analytically that uh, this is, if, the, if it is zero dimensional, this is peak nabla. And by hot theory, if you know that this is uh, zero dimensional, then you obtain immediately uh, that, uh, in fact, uh, the, um, the space of uh, one form is zero. So peak nabla is the same as peak tau. And then you want this to be finite, uh, this is equivalent to saying that peak tau is the same as the torsion in the neuron severi, and then you are done, because the torsion will tell you that the um, monodromy is finite. So this is really a toy model here, there's not much of a proof, but this toy model you can do purely algebraically, because you can say that if you have a rank one connection here, and if you have the finiteness condition, so that means the uh, modular space is zero dimensional, then uh, the sequence here of your rank one connection to the tensor power uh, an, um, an, uh, um, an, an, uh, an uh, integer uh, has to be finite. So this sequence has to be finite. That means this sequence has to be pre-periodic. So, so you will find two powers here, which differ in such a way that the connection to this power is the same. That means that the connection to some finite power is going to be trivial. And consequently, the connection is torsion. So that is a purely uh, algebraic way to see the same thing. So uh, let us go to isocrystals. 
So uh, if our variety, so now we have a smooth projective variety defined over a characteristic P feed, which is algebraically closed for simplicity. And in also because it's more general. And uh, assume that the variety is to characteristic zero. So we have this equation here. Here, x is a mod p reduction of a smooth projective variety defined about w. And assume that we have this vanishing condition, so no symmetric differential forms over the characteristic zero in characteristic zero of this variety xw. So capital K is a field of fractions of the ring of its vectors w here. Then we can conclude the following thing. All eladic local systems on X here have finite monodromy. And uh, that is not uh, too hard. And the second thing is that if we put some arithmetic here, so we assume that K is uh, the algebraic closure of a finite field, then in fact, uh, what is um, equivalent to saying uh, in uh, the, over the complex numbers that the monodromy is finite is equivalent to saying that uh, the connection is trivialized by a finite etal cover. And here this is true. That means uh, uh, that uh, if we are over FP bar, then any convergent as a crystal is going to be trivialized by a finite etal cover. So let me discuss this because that's uh, uh, so also the topic of the conference here. So here's a proof. So the first part of the proof here is not very difficult because the first part of the proof goes like this. Because we assume here that the variety comes from characteristic zero. So uh, there is um, the specialization homomorphism of Grothendieck, which goes, so we fix, uh, if you like, a complex embedding of capital K to, um, to C. And then we have the specialization homomorphism for the fundamental group, which is subjective. That's the theorem of Grothendieck first that the specialization hom uh, homomorphism exists, and secondly, that it is subjective. But now, in characteristic zero, over C, we have the theorem of uh, Bruno Pap, Klingler, and Totaro, which is telling us, because of course, the symmetric differential forms, the fact that they have uh, no uh, sections over capital K implies that they have no sections over C, because uh, we have best change, this is coherent cohomology. And consequently, any local system has finite monodromy. So consequently, the uh, connection here, uh, yeah, that's it. Consequently, any local system has finite monodromy. So the first part here is a direct consequence of Grothendieck specialization theory and the theorem we, we already discussed, which is coming from Hodge theory. Now we discuss the second part. So this is more subtle. So recall what we already discussed, that uh, um, an isocrystal, not an, um, a convergent isocrystal, that's an extra condition, but just an isocrystal can be realized because X is proper, as an algebraic connection on X over capital K with a property that it respects a lattice W and with a property that the mod P connection of this connection over W here has mid potent P curvature. So now uh, F, the Frobenius does not act on all connections over capital K but it does act on those uh, which are isocrystals. That means which have the property that the lattice is fixed and, uh, um, and then the mod P reduction is stabilized by, um, in, uh, I'm sorry, the mod P reduction has need potent uh, P curvature. So it acts on isocrystal, but we have this, uh, because we have this vanishing condition, we have this finiteness condition, so the modular space 
over capital K is finite, and uh, over C is finite, over C, capital K is finite. So we have pre-periodicity for the F orbit of any isocrystal. So because we have uh, pre-periodicity, so there will be um, an, uh, so we will have a, an equation of the same type we had before. So maybe I can write here. So think of L not being our local system here, but being our connection over capital K. So we have pre-periodicity. So we have uh, the tensor m's power of this connection is the same as the tensor n's power of this connection. And this is to say that it, we will have some, some Frobenius pullback here. It's not the tensor L power, but this is a Frobenius pullback here uh, of this connection here, uh, which is going to be stabilized by the tensor m's power of the, the Frobenius to the power m's pullback. So this connection here, Frobenius pullback to the power m is going to be stabilized by some the Frobenius pullback, not quite the Frobenius pullback, but the m's power of the Frobenius pullback for some m at least one because of pre-periodicity. But now we can apply our theorem with Tomoyuki Abe or the theorem of uh, Kedlaya, which uh, in fact ultimately relies on the theorem of Drinfeld on the existence of companions. So they are elliptic companions. And uh, because they are elliptic companions and because of the first part of the theorem, then there is a finite detail cover which trivializes the elliptic companion and consequently which trivializes here the, uh, this Frobenius pullback because the L function is preserved by the elliptic companion. It's going to trivialize this Frobenius pullback, this high Frobenius pullback of this, uh, this connection here, this isocrystal and therefore this connection. But now we use, so far we didn't use the, 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 to apply the, I'm sorry, to apply, the, oops, ah, I apologize. To apply the LID companions here, we already use that we have a uh, convergent isocrystal. I forgot to mention that uh, convergent on X proper is the same as over convergent, so we can apply the LID companion here. So we obtain that this, this high Frobenius pullback here of the isocrystal is trivial on this finite et al cover. But uh, again, we apply again the fact that uh, the, um, the uh, isocrystal is convergent to conclude that uh, uh, the Frobenius is an, is an equivalence of category on the category of uh, convergent isocrystal. So if some high Frobenius uh, pullback here is trivial on a finite et al cover, then the uh, isocrystal itself on this finite et al cover is trivial, and that's the end of the proof here. So uh, this is quite appealing here. I mean, it uh, makes one dreaming. Uh, what would be, the, of course, this theorem here is an application of, uh, in particular, of hot theory, because we used the theorem which was derived from hot theory here. Uh, and uh, so we could use it because uh, uh, we can live to characteristic zero. But of course, it's not a good game to live to characteristic zero. So we can pose a problem. Assume X is smooth projective over K equals K bar of characteristic P. Is it the case that all QL bar local systems have finite monodromy? And is it the case that uh, if in addition we have some arithmetics, that means if the ground field here is the algebraic closure of FP, is it the case that all convergent isocrystal are et al trivializable? And of course, uh, I, I just repeat myself now, the remark is that if X lift to XW, then the proposition we just proved here give a positive answer to this question. And why is that? Is because the condition here, the vanishing of a little k here, implies by semi-continuity of cohomology, oh, I apologize, 
uh, implies by semi-continuity of cohomology that uh, if the symmetric, there are no global symmetric differential forms in characteristic P, then there are no global symmetric differential forms in characteristic zero for the lift, and then we can apply the proposition. Okay, so this is a problem here, it might be wrong, but uh, at any rate, if the variety lifts, it is true. And now it is a quite challenging question to understand what happens if we don't, don't have a lift because then we don't have hot theory at disposal. So that was one part. And now I go to mod P and then I stop. Uh, as I said, so uh, the inspiration is coming from complex geometry. Uh, this gives us some way to think of isocrystals, uh, some condition for isocrystals to be uh, not trivial, but trivial after a finite detail cover of the variety in characteristic P. And now we look really at geometry completely in characteristic P. So that means we don't have isocrystals, we just have a connection, mod P connection, I mean connection in characteristic P. So that is much less motivic than uh, uh, isocrystals, because as we know, at least conjecturally, isocrystals. Uh, F over convergent isocrystals over FP bar, they should be motivic. We don't know that, but uh, we know uh, over a curve, but in general, we don't know, but uh, we can derive consequences. While connections, just connection in characteristic P, this is not motivic. But uh, nonetheless, they, they carry some motivic information. And let me give you here, one CRM uh, for rank two. As I said, it's work in progress, so it works in rank two, probably it works in higher rank, but uh, I cannot tell so far. So let us assume for this to be true that we have a Deligne Lusi, uh, we are in the Deligne Lusi setting, so that means the variety lives to characteristic zero, so it's most projective and lives to characteristic zero, and all what I'm going to say in the proof, not in the statement, but in the proof, we depend on, uh, on the existence of this lift. And uh, when I say the Lini Lucy, then I say uh, August Vologotsky as a generalization of uh, the Lini Lucy. So then the theorem is if we assume the vanishing condition in characteristic P, like, uh, like in the problem here for isocrystals. So we assume the vanishing condition in characteristic P, but then this vanishing condition, uh, as I said, it's a coherent condition, so it's compatible with the uh, best change. And uh, so I can formulate it directly over FQ. It's not a stronger assumption. Uh, so it's the same assumption as the one we had here. So let us assume we have the vanishing condition. Then the conclusion is that, so it's of course a strong condition, the conclusion is that any rank two locally free semi-stable degree zero in ABLA, so connection, is et al trivializable. So let me show you this. Uh, and I, 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 will make, uh, I will make just one case and for the purpose of the lecture here. So first, uh, uh, let me recall, because uh, we are in characteristic zero, um, and we are uh, in characteristic zero, I explain what is a hitching base. I have to explain what is a hitching base here for uh, the Durham moduli space. The hitching base in characteristic zero due to uh, hitching and uh, Simpson, is a base which re receives the characteristic polynomial of the Higgs field. So it starts from the moduli of the Higgs bundles and lands in this affine space, um, which is uh, uh, the points of which are symmetric differential forms. But this itching base does not exist in characteristic zero in the Durham moduli, but it does in characteristic P. Why is that? In fact, I, I, I could have made uh, one more slide here. I was a little bit uh, lazy. Let me explain in words. 
So when we have a connection in characteristic P, we have its P curvature, which was already mentioned because uh, this was precisely the condition <coughs> for a lattice in characteristic zero, Durham lattice in characteristic zero over W, uh, uh, to have the properties that, that its uh, characteristic zero fiber is an isocrystal. And the condition is that the mod P reduction now has um, uh, need potent P curvature. And uh, so uh, the P curvature here is a linear map. It's an all linear map from the vector bundle with values in the vector bundle twisted by the Frobenius inverse of the one forms. But um, so that means said differently, it's a global section of the endomorphism of E tensors the Frobenius inverse of the one forms. And uh, when I say Frobenius, I can be uh, very precise. The Frobenius is a relative Frobenius, which goes from X to the <coughs> Frobenius twist of X. But we have an extra information, which is due to um, Nick Katz, which says that the following is that this uh, uh, P curvature, in fact, is a flat section. So if I say flat, I should say with respect to which connection on the vector bundle. So I have Frobenius inverse of the one forms tensor, tensorized with the endomorphism of the vector bundle. The vector bundle is endowed with the connections, that is the assumption. So the endomorphism of the vector bundles are endowed with the connection. So that gives me a connection on this part, and then I have, I have tensor product with the Frobenius inverse of the one forms. So now on the Frobenius inverse of any coherent sheaf, I have a connection, which is called the canonical connection. The flat sections of which are precisely the, the, the sheaf on the Frobenius twist of the variety. So Katz observed that the uh, P curvature conjecture, uh, the P curvature, I apologize, is flat with respect to this uh, tensor connection. And consequently, when I take uh, the, the characteristic polynomial, which uh, uh, the coefficients of which are living in the global sections of the Frobenius inverse of the symmetric differential forms, then those are flat under the canonical connection. So that means a descent to symmetric differential forms on the Frobenius twist of the variety. So, uh, and that is a hitching map on the Durham moduli. It goes from the Durham moduli on X of a given rank to the hitching base on X prime. Okay. And this map is proper. So uh, the property one has in characteristic zero, one has in characteristic P as well, uh, due to a theorem of Laszlo and um, Adrian Langer, I think. But uh, we don't use that here. So this map exists. And uh, if the hitching base is zero, I mean, if we do not have symmetric differential forms, then the curvature is, uh, is nipotent just by, uh, by definition. So now we have the theory on which I didn't want to say too much, even though it is uh, very important because it is in the background of the method. Probably one can do it uh, without really uh, using the whole theory just by hand. We have the theory of uh, pre-periodic Higgs theorem. And uh, the theorem which is behind, which is due to them and uh, with a bit of addition of Adrian Langer, is that any uh, semi-stable connection of degree zero in characteristic P uh, has a, a defined over a finite field, had, well, in fact, uh, yeah, okay, uh, uh, has a pre-periodic Higgs theorem flow. Let me not tell you so precisely what it means, but let me tell you one consequence. In case these periods are, say, pre-periodic, I say, assume it's really periodic of period one, just for simplicity of discussion. Then you have to do something, but uh, let us assume that. 
What does that mean? That means the following. That means that E nabla, in fact, the canonical connection. That means E is a Frobenius pullback of, uh, then, I'm sorry, then we have two options. The first option is what I started to explain. Either E is a Frobenius inverse of, of a connection, and then there is a theory of the length torsor, which goes back to the 60s, which yields a finite etal cover of the variety over which E is trivialized by the very definition. So it's a sort of a non-commutative Artin-Schreier cover of X, which is given by this equation E equals Frobenius inverse of E. And then on this cover, the connection becomes just a matrix of global one forms, but those are trivial because the strong vanishing condition here has this uh, marvelous properties that if X has this strong vanishing condition, then any finite cover of X has a strong vanishing condition. It's an observation which has been done already by uh, Bruno Barb, Klingler, and Totaro, and which is easy to see. So this matrix of uh, one forms has to be zero, and consequently, the connection is trivialized on this uh, cover. So uh, either we have this, that's the easy case, or we have the general case, and the general case is quite beautiful because uh, it ties up exactly to the condition we have, and let me explain this. So first we have nilpotent picker vector, and that is to say that this rank 2 connection here is an extension of two rank 1 conditions, each of which with vanishing Picavature condition, uh, vanishing Picavature, but vanishing Picavature in in, um, in any rank by the theory of Katz and Cartier, it means that the connection is a canonical connection. That means it comes via Frobenius pullback of uh, uh, form bundles defined over the Frobenius twist. So the net potency of the Picavature here implies this here. On the other hand, the problem itself because the uh, connections are uh, rigid, it implies that we have, and it's semi-stable, it implies that the underlying uh, vector bundle here has an effectuation by the same uh, line bundles which are written here. And here I put the upper index negative and positive, that coming from the theory of semi-stability, this means that this one has negative degree, this one has positive degree. And the fact that the period is one is telling us that the infiltration here is by the same shifts. That means the sub now, the, the E itself is going to be highly instable, but as a connection it is stable, but as a coherent object it is instable. And the positive sub here is precisely this one, and the negative sub, uh, the negative quotient is precisely this one here. So it has two corollaries. The first corollary here is that out of this extension here, uh, we have the Codera Spencer map, and the Codera Spencer map is going to yield an injection of the sub here twisted by the inverse of the quotient inside of the one forms. And at the same time, the first sequence here combined with the second one is going to tell us that this positive sub here of E, when I read here, it cannot go here because this one was negative, so it has to go here. But if it goes here, it is telling us that because the Frobenius pullback is just a piece power of the version of a descended over the same field, so it is just telling us that uh, the p minus first power of this one has a section. And similarly, the p minus uh, first um, power of the inverse of this one, I apologize, is going to have a section. So that means that uh, this map here, which is given by the Codar Spencer class, when I take the same p minus one power of it, it yields 
a section of sim p minus one of omega one, which is a contradiction to the assumption of vanishing here. Okay, so consequently, I cannot have the second variant here. And consequently, I have the first one. So I have the length tensor, which trivializes the connection. And that's the end of my lecture. And I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for, for the talk. Um, do you have any questions? <laughs>